We asked our viewers to pick the hottest games they've been playing and we're going to count down the ones that received the most viewers votes up next in this month's People's Choice Top 10. Hello, I'm Matthew Jude and joining me to present this month's Top 10 is Matthew Jude from a Mirror Dimension. Greetings. I thought you were going to introduce yourself by like saying the opposite, like goodbye or something. No, that's Matthew Jude from the Bizarro Dimension. I kind of just figured that all your dimensions were basically the same. Wow, okay. That's offensive. Well, for something that won't offend, it's the first game our viewers voted for this month. The King is Dead, a political power play set in Britain during the chaotic period after the death of King Arthur. Now, for the good of the country, a leader must unite the Scots, the Welsh and the Romano-British, not by conquest, but by diplomacy. As a prospective leader, each player uses their power to benefit factions gaining influence among their ranks. And the player with the greatest influence over the most powerful faction is crowned the new ruler of Britain. The King is Dead 2nd Edition refreshes the game with updated graphic design, new artwork and a brand new advanced asymmetrical game mode. Viewer Jonathan L from Your Dimension is among those who selected this game saying what a game! Very easy to make real life enemies when they snatch victory from you in the final round. Not that I hold any grudges or anything. I'm sorry, I can't relate. Holding a grudge isn't something that we do in the mirror dimension. Really? All the other dimensions said that you are the ones that do hold grudges. No. Who said that? I'll never forgive them. I'll hunt them for a thousand years. And speaking of visitors who I'm no longer sure come in peace. We have the first sponsor that helped make this episode possible. World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King, a pandemic system game from Z-Man Games. Calling all worthy defenders of Azeroth, the Lich King and his undead scourge threaten to overrun the continent of Northrend. And now the land's bravest legendary heroes battle ghouls and abominations, complete quests, and then face off against the Lich King himself in an epic showdown at Ice Crown Citadel. Can you save the world from the merciless Lich King, or will his cursed blade claim yet another soul, which he's going to keep in a display case in his foyer? The game combines the wildly popular World of Warcraft setting with Pandemic's innovative cooperative gameplay and dynamic car play helps manage threats and complete difficult quests across an epic large board with illustrated cards and striking miniatures. World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King will be available this autumn at toy and hobby retailers across the country so follow the link in the video's description for the best location to find the game near you. Work work. I'll do it. The next game selected this month is Doctor Who Flux, a card game in which the cards themselves determine the current rules of the game. That's how all card games are played here. Then what makes Flux different in your dimension? Playing it brings animals back from the dead? Yeah. See, I knew it was going to be, you know, this is exactly... The cards played will alter how many cards players draw each time how cards are played, and even the game's win condition. And Doctor Who Flux takes this premise and merges it with multiple regenerations of the Doctor, various companions, Gallifreyan technology, K9, Cybermen, Daleks, Weeping Angels, and the Master. Viewer Thomas V asserts that drawing four cards and playing them lost in time and space is a nice theme for Flux. And Gao Man Chan adds, what better way to celebrate Doctor Who Flux than by playing Doctor Who Flux? Absolutely. Do you have Doctor Who, Matthew, in the mirror dimension? Ah, yes, of course, but we do refer to him as the grammatically correct Doctor Whom. Great, yeah, thanks for that. I'm sure we'll look forward to hearing all about that in the comments. Well, so. here's, as we say, wishing you bad luck with that. Oh, so you do say like the opposite of what you mean then in your dimension. No, that means the same thing here and there. I hereby declare that the next game on this month's list shall henceforth be Railroad Inc. Deep Blue Edition, the multiplayer puzzle game in which players compete to connect as many exits on their game boards as possible. 
The more exits a player connects, the more points they score, but points are also lost for each incomplete route. So winning requires a combination of careful planning and pressing one's luck to stretch the transportation networks from exit to exit. Railroading comes in two versions, each one including two expansions with additional dice sets that add new spatial rules to the game. For example, the Deep Blue Edition includes the Rivers and the Lakes expansions, increasing the difficulty by adding a river route into the mix and using lakes to connect your networks via a ferry. Has the accent of the mirror dimension Matthew changed that this video has gone on? Mm, possibly. Viewer Jonathan L voted for railroading because train games are awesome and this is a really fun game with lots of replayability. Adding in Choo Choo. And viewer Luke P said nothing because viewer Luke P's vote came with a blank message submitted with it. So what do we do in these cases? Oh, well, you know, we usually just take the opportunity to say something ourselves. Ah, oh, yes, of course, a personal message. Something like, citizens of Matthew's world, the invasion by the mirror dimension will be brutal, unforgiving, and will usher in a new era of fear and obedience for you all. Yeah, yeah, Ab about the game, you know. We take a moment there to say a message about the game. Oh, my bad. How about after the interdimensional insurrection, Railroad Inc. will be one of the few remaining pastimes? I mean, yeah, that's technically better. So we'll go with that. The next highest votes getting game this month is The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim the adventure game, a one to four player cooperative game of adventure and exploration across the fantastical realm of Skyrim. With numerous choices of characters, gear, music and skills matched with the various decisions each player makes during their quests, there are literally hundreds of hours of gameplay. Plus, at any time, players can reset, choose another character and play style, make different choices and undergo a completely different experience, like an infinite number of mirror dimensions built right into the box. Which, yeah, might be why viewer Tony K voted for this game, proclaiming, sing along with me, all in, all in, all in, all in. All in. Sounds like Tony K may be stuck in a repeating time loop dimension. What's a repeating time loop dimension? Sounds like Tony K may be stuck in a repeating time loop dimension. What's a repeating time loop dimension? Sounds like Tony K may be stuck in a repeating time loop dimension. Yeah. What's a repeating time loop? You know, hanging out with you is an awful lot of work. Ah, yes, this is coming from the guy whose dimension thought it was a good idea to invent leaded gasoline. Encrypted, which just so happens to be the next game picked this month, a group of answer-seeking cryptozoologists come together to discover an elusive creature. Each player holds one piece of evidence to help them find it, and on their turn, they can try to gain more information from their opponents. But be warned, give too much information away and your opponents might beat you to the mysterious animal and claim the glory for themselves and then you will be thrown screaming into the pit of eternal agony to suffer the consequences of your loss. You know, and this is just a hunch, but I think you've got a different version of this game in the mirror dimension. The expansion's not released in your dimension? Jonathan L selected Cryptid after this game came to our table at our game group recently. Such a great game and the frustration of almost having it worked out is definitely part of the fun. Jonathan, sweet Jonathan, you haven't experienced fun until you've banished your first broken soul into the pit of eternal agony. All right, yeah, okay. We do have our own pit of eternal agony here. All right, it's called Twitter. Next up, we find Res Arcana Perle Imperi, the second expansion for Res Arcana, which adds a new essence type, pearls, to aid mages in creating powerful artifacts in their quest for mythical, mystical domination. The purity of pearls is coveted by all because they add versatility to existing strategies and open up new paths to victory. 
Viewers Tyler and Aaron are among those who selected this game, reporting that Sandcastle Games have stated that this new expansion should be hitting the US this month. So fingers crossed that we can get these pearls of power added to one of our favourite games. Matthew, what does, what does it mean for one to cross their fingers? You know, like fingers crossed. Do you not cross your fingers for good luck in the mirror dimension? No, no, no. We have one very simple measurement for luck in the mirror dimension. It's how long have you managed to avoid the pit of eternal agony? Here in this dimension, one thing you can't avoid is advertising, which does bring us to this episode's other sponsor, limited edition gaming accessories from Upper Deck. This line of gaming accessories protects your cars from tears, spills, and wombat attacks and features fan favorite Marvel superheroes and villains while it does it. Table up in style with card sleeves featuring Spider-Man, Miss Marvel, Black Panther, Black Widow, Wolverine, Venom, Thor, on a unicorn and others. Additionally, a series of both decorative and functional playmats are also available. They said it couldn't be done, but these feature even more fan favorites, Wolverine, Spider-Man, Thanos, The Avengers, and many others. These and more gaming accessories are available at local game stores and through the link in this video's description to upperdeckstore.com use them to enhance and protect any game you play. Otherwise, you're leaving yourself like wide open to wombat attacks. The third edition of horror-themed hidden movement game Fury of Dracula finds it to spot number four. With lots of updates over its previous versions, it features all new art and graphic design and it's crafted to complement the game's intuitive thematic mechanisms. And additionally, rounds are now broken into day and night, while hunters taking actions during both, and Dracula can only come out at night because he's a vampire. Combat is streamlined and the new rumor tokens allow Dracula to mislead hunters and extend his terrible reach of influence across the board. Hmm, yes, this Dracula character seems very interesting. I like him. With his draining the very life force from his innocent victims? Yeah, he's a laugh riot. Oh, it seems no wonder then that Timothy T proclaims that Fury of Dracula is my favorite game. It's the game that brought me into the hobby. And Luke P professes that he voted for this game because honestly, it's the only game on this list that I own. Speaking of game collections, Matthew, I see that like there's mirror versions of all our games there on your shelf. Do you get time to play them much? No, not really. These are boxes full of millipedes. Yeah, of course, that makes sense. Boxes and millipedes. I thought that's what I expected them to be in there, yeah. Boxes. Boxes and millipedes, yeah. Marvel Dice Throne explodes onto this month's list, earning comments like this one from Carman Chan, who said, Never stepped into Dice Throne, but this Marvel version really makes me want to dive in. Well, dive into this. In Marvel Dice Throne, players become one of Marvel's most famous heroes. Each painstakingly designed and balanced to provide the most thematic experience possible. This new version of Dice Throne expands on previous versions featuring all new mechanisms and asymmetrical designs, with the goal of providing the most innovative and exciting heroes yet. Viewers Tyler and Aaron added fun game and Marvel equals a four letter word I'm unfamiliar with. The features in this new version of Dice Throne look amazing, make mine marvel. And let me guess, Matthew Jude from a mirror dimension, where you're from, the new version of Dice Thrones is based on DC Comics or something like that, right? D what comics? I've never heard of it. No, as is Harvey Comics Dice Throne. You haven't lived until you've rolled Richie Rich and Little Lotta into dice-driven Mortal Kombat. You are aware you come from a strange dimension, right? I suppose I do. You should see our haberdasheries. No survivors. The second highest ranking selection of this month's list wasn't even a game, but a specific expansion for a game, Ashes Reborn, the Gorin Rock expansion. And in this set, the Phoenix-born Lulu First Stone has been reimagined with a full deck of her own. Lulu uses time and natural magic for explosive combat and to survive the harsh environment where her city, Goron Rock, stands. And in turn, one of the fighters of Goron Rock can exert themselves and fire off a final blast of damage. And with the power of the Phoenix within, Lulu launches spirited blasts of fire. 
Viewer Thomas V selected this as one of his picks because it's more content for one of the best card games out there. Now with Lava. <laughs> you sound just like the Mirror Dimensions Ministry of Tourism. And Lava. And while admittedly viewer Vincent V doesn't mention Molten Magma, he does mention the game's Red Heart artwork saying, seriously, every artist working on this game keeps bringing the good stuff. Expansion after expansion, card after card. Chef's kiss. Ah, uh, yes. I kissed a chef once, you know. I'll be honest, I kind of don't know what this has to do with the miserable mirror dimension. Oh, this was just the pleasant end to a romantic evening. Oh, well, that's not. An evening of root canals and accepting collect calls from malicious telemarketers. Because it's the mirror dimension. Because it's the mirror dimension, yes. In King Domino Origins, go back in time to the prehistoric era of King Domino. Go on, Matthew, do it. All right. I've got nothing else going on, and I know for sure that you don't have anything else going on. I'm well aware that your Pilates class was cancelled. King Domino Origins plays similar to the original game, but introduces new components for additional actions and new ways to score points. Regions in players' territories will earn them points if they contain fire, which is either part of the train or earned by adding dominoes that contain volcanoes. Viewer Autumn P exclaims, Counts me curious! I think King Domino is a great family game, but I didn't love how Queen Domino built on it. Curious to try this one out though. Love those cave person meeples. And Alfredo Z wraps things up simply by saying, another King Domino? Great. And Matthew, I'd like to wrap things up here with you by saying, I believe we got off on the wrong foot. But was that the end of the sentence? Yes, that was, yes, that was the end of the sentence. Boom, roasted roasted. Until next time, continue curating cardboard collections by carrying on to this month's On The Radar episode featuring our personal game picks and follow the link in the description to our Patreon to find out how you can vote on next month's People's Choice episode. Thank you and we'll see you next time. Smell you later.